let's continue talking about how to make a tower defense game in GDevelop. This is part two of the video, and in the last video, we went over spawning zombies, setting up the game, and the basics for arrays. So now, you're spawning zombies based on the queue, and then as each one spawns, it checks to see where those points are, and then adds the X and Y position of those points to its own list, and then moves towards the first position. And then if that first variable inside of the queue is zero, then remove the variable at index zero from the scene array. So we get rid of it and allow the next number in the queue to move up. So then it can be checked. And now that we've got our first zombies moving, we use this event to keep them moving. So use the event type repeat for each instance and set it to zombie. And then if that tween move that they started with finishes playing, remove the top X and Y position because this means they've gotten there already. And then if the number of children in the array variable, target X or target Y, you could use either one, of the zombie is greater than zero, which means that there's something in the list, use that same action that we used before to move the zombie to that next position on their list. And also use the action to rotate the zombie towards that position with a speed of zero so it happens instantly. And you can just copy these positions and paste them into the X and Y for the rotation event. And with this part of the event, each zombie will move from one to two to three. But once they get to three, we need to do something different. So if the number of children in the array for target X or target Y of the zombie is equal to zero, which means we've reached the third spot and there's nothing left in the list, change the value of the flat heart bar, which is the custom resource bar object that we put in by subtracting one from it and deleting that zombie. So this means that they've gotten to the end and they've taken one of our lives. And if that happens to be the last life that they've taken, so the value of the health bar is equal to zero, change the scene back to game scene to restart the game. And then for the towers, we place the towers using the method that we showed in the other video that I'll link at the end. Only in this case, we'll be placing the base and then the target head on top. And then this event is used to target and fire at the zombies. So repeat for each instance of tower head and then use the condition if the tower head distance to zombie is below 200, rotate the tower head towards the zombie X and Y position at the speed of zero, and then use the fire bullet action from the fire bullet extension that I mentioned earlier to fire a bullet from the tower head to the zombie at a speed of 500. And to make sure that they're always shooting at the zombie, I added a point called shot point to the front of the zombie and use that as the position to fire the bullet towards. And then this action up here will kill the zombies. So repeat for each instance of bullet, check to see if the bullet's X and Y position is inside of a zombie, and if it is, delete the bullet and apply one point of damage to the zombie using this action that comes from the health extension behavior that I mentioned earlier. And then, if the bullet hits a zombie, and then the zombie is dead, so its health is zero, delete the zombie and give yourself two gold. Now I understand that was a lot to take in, but this last bit is easy. So I have a shape painter object that I'm calling range. I created it, changed its name, picked the colors, unticked, draw the shape relative to the object's position on scene, and then in the events, whenever the indicator object is visible, use the draw circle action and the X and Y coordinates of that indicator object and set the radius of the circle to 200, because that's the distance that we're using in the targeting event for the tower. Now in game, when the indicator is visible, the shape painter object will show a circle with a range of 200 pixels around the indicator. Although you do need to make sure that the shape painter object is placed into the scene so that it actually exists in game. And that is one way to make a tower defense game in GDevelop. Now, of course, if you haven't seen part one of this video, go watch that. Then maybe check out this video that should help you get more people to play your game. <laughs>